as the Confederate First Corps began to arrive on the field, one of the first things that Longstreet did was uh, have a scouting troop go forward and look to see if there was a way around the Union Corps. And amazingly enough, both Union flanks were in the air, meaning that they were not refused. They had no unit facing at a right angle to the main Union line to protect it from a flanking attack. Uh, furthermore, there was an unfinished railroad cut that went around the Union left flank, the Confederate right, which permitted Longstreet to send four brigades down the railroad cut to line up at a right angle and to smash into the Union lines exactly as Stonewall Jackson had done at the Battle of Chancellorsville only five miles away almost exactly a year previously. Longstreet gave the job to his chief of staff, who was a 26-year-old kid named Moxley Sorrell. And Sorrell, very, although he was only a colonel, very enthusiastically directed a series of brigadier generals down the railroad cut, around the flank, and into the side of Hancock's Corps, which sent them reeling back to the Brock Road, which in fact was the very road that Jackson had used at Chancellorsville. And that effectively, effectively ended Union attempts at offensive maneuvers on these days. By now, it was concluded by Meade and Grant it was, uh, the Confederates were too well dug in, as you can easily see by these trench lines that just run continuously for three and a half miles or more. And so it was at that point that Grant made the strategic decision not to fall back on his line of communications, but instead to move closer to Richmond and to attempt to get in between Lee and Grant so that he could set up defensively and force Lee to attack him. That, of course, did not happen. But Grant was far too pugnacious to permit Lee to simply hold the strategic initiative by retaining the defensive initiative. That makes no sense. Forgive me. So, therefore, the Battle of the Wilderness and its fires seamlessly lead into the Battle of Spotsylvania Courthouse. And after horrifying, horrifying results at Spotsylvania, that in turn led to the so-called skirmishes of North Anna River, which resulted in 15,000 casualties all by themselves, or something insane like that. And that in turn led Grant to slip around Richmond and try to land on Petersburg. And thus was the entire Overland Campaign, which was categorized by one significant difference between all prior Union campaigns in Virginia, which was that U.S. Grant did not accept defeat. He just kept going. That's how he won.